All right, everyone, now we have to do a little bit of poll analysis. We do have two new polls, actually, in as of the 17th, but they've just barely been aggregated. I think there's something desperately wrong with that situation uh, on RCP. Link in the description. You can follow along if you want. And I wanted to sort of go through and analyze the little bit of movement that we've got. The first major thing is Warren has definitely, she's stabilizing down at her low. Um, she's down around 20, 21 points. That, by the way, is not enough to challenge Biden. She's not going to be able to pull ahead at the rate she's at, and she's been flat now for a couple of weeks. It looks like she's had her hard peak, she's found her floor now, and she's probably going to gravitate around there as the anti-Biden. But Biden is up in both new polls. He's in the 30s in both of them. That's good news for him. Uh, he had been at a lull, but the, what you've seen is Biden is very consistent. His floor appears to be around 26 points, and his ceiling is at around 31. And he keeps going up and down within that range and has for a number of months. He's already technically, by the way, had his peak. It's just that his floor is higher than anyone else's because all of the centrist, more moderate people are backing him. The one wild card, the one thing we have to think of in the next round of polling, and we have to wait maybe a week or two for this, what about his position on marijuana? How big importance is that going to take up in the race? Now, this has been a back burner, maybe third tier issue so far in this election. The drug war is not really on anyone's mind, really right now. It's about impeachment. Is the president honest and capable of leading, number one? Number two, all of the main issues of, of import to his fans, the wall, immigration, some diplomacy, certainly taxes and the economy. Those are the main sort of meat and bones of the Trump side. On the Dem side, it's who can beat Trump. That's the big issue for them. When we're looking at this also, we have a third thing we have to keep in mind, which is Sanders is very quickly narrowing the gap between himself and Warren. You've got to understand that for the first half of the primaries, he was ahead of her. He was consistently ahead of her. The only time she zooms ahead is when she peaks. If she recedes further, I believe that what we're beginning to see here is that Sanders and Warren have an interchange, which we've seen before. When Biden peaked before, it was mostly draining Bernie Sanders. Literally, look at the chart. You can see it visually. It's that stark. Sanders plummets like a rock. Biden shoots up ahead. Then they go back to roughly where they were before over the course of a few weeks. It's beginning to look a lot like Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders now have this core of soft support that wants a leftist candidate who's viable, but it can't decide which of them is the more viable one. The problem is that if they continue sharing that particular aspect of the vote, and it's probably about 10 points worth of voting, it's a fairly significant number of Democrats, if they remain even, neither of them will be able to challenge Biden in any of the early states. He could walk away with Iowa, although it could be a squeaker, because remember, Booty Judge is putting all in on Iowa, it seems. And Booty Judge could come in, slam uh, uh, Biden out of the way there. He loses narrowly maybe to Sanders in New Hampshire. He begins looking weaker. The problem for Biden is that his main strength is South Carolina and Nevada, and they go after. So you have two states that vote first that could make him look weaker. However, if he manages to at least narrowly hold Iowa, maybe come in a close second or beat out Sanders in New Hampshire, he, I think he runs away with it. Biden could get four for four in the early states. He begins to look inevitable. Going into Super Tuesday, it doesn't matter if Kamala and Bloomberg have caused chaos by putting all of their eggs in that basket. It doesn't matter. Sanders will win a few. Warren will win a few. Biden will win a few. But at the end of the day, he'll have seven or eight states. They'll each have like two or three. Uh, and that's what you'll see. But keep an eye on, on Bernie Sanders. Because if he rises up a few more points and supplants Elizabeth Warren, one of the problems for Sanders is that he looks less electable because for a while now he's been in third place. It's much better to be in second place. Then people can say, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie. Oh, here's the alternative. Here's the savior. Biden can't win it. Bernie can. Let's get him in there. Let alone he'll be, you know, 79 years old. But <laughs> we think he can win. It's funny, by the way, uh, you heard very little about Bernie Sanders having a, an admitted heart attack. But you've heard a great deal in the wake of Trump's impromptu two-hour-long uh, medical exam that they say there's nothing odd about it. Now, you've heard a lot about him either having chest pains or being poisoned. Interesting. By the way, the claiming that he had chest pains, it's not that big a conspiracy theory. He's a 73-year-old man, of course. He might have angina once in a while. He eats Big Macs every fucking day. It wouldn't be that strange to suggest. It's just that you don't have any evidence that's the case. So I would like a little bit more uh, meat on those bones myself. 
Also, Booty Judge, he's still moving ahead. He's at 8.3. He was stalled out around the upper 7, 8.0 thereabouts. He's inching ahead further. Harris is still below 5. She's no longer viable. I, I think at this point, Harris has been down below 5 long enough that she really isn't a contender anymore because she's already had her peak. She's had so many campaign problems. At some point, anyone that believes in electability right now has pretty much already hitched their wagon to a horse. You've got a lot of soft support gravitating around, but it's like, it's like, is there enough left at this point so that unless the entire bottom half of the field drops out for anyone else to shoot up into the top rung, that's number one, because Booty Judge is basically the end-all be-all of viability at the moment, and he's still down there. If you look visually at this, it looks like 2016. Booty Judge is technically viable on paper. But if you map it out visually, and this is an aggregate, this is an aggregate, a poll of polls. This is far more accurate than an individual poll. What I see is him as the, the winner of the losers, not the loser of the winners. It's better to be in the winner's circle in last place than to be an also-ran who happens to have had more viability than the rest of the also-rans. Because the latter technically isn't viable at all. It's Numerically it is. He's above five or six points. He's in that zone. He is clearly, visually, when you represent him, he's not that much further ahead from Kamala than Kamala is from de Blasio or, or somebody who's barely even existing, doesn't even really have a political pulse. That step of separation isn't that impressive. And the same is true when you think of Sanders. Sanders is at the bottom of the top three. That takes him within the realm of viability, but we have to look at whether he or Warren is authentically going to be the anti-Biden candidate. There's only really room for one. One of them really should drop out and endorse the other. Then they would win and the other person could be the running mate. I don't think that it would work. Arguably, Sanders should be the candidate. Say, okay, Elizabeth Warren will be his running mate. You know, she's also old, but it doesn't really matter anymore within the de Democratic Party, I suppose. And they could cruise past Biden easily, win every state probably. Now, Biden is a reaction and probably try to wine and dine booty judge. That'd be about his only hope. Yeah, here's this dude who's still in his 30s. <laughs> He's sort of a Jimmy Carter Democrat, but, uh, you know, we'll take what we can get. Oh, man, can you imagine how fucking funny that would be? I, I mean, the best thing about this election is going to happen after the, after the primaries have already generated a candidate looking at who they choose as a running mate. That is going to be the funniest fucking goddamn process ever because, I mean, looking at the field, literally, the only two sane people in the field, and I don't even think that translates necessarily in the Democratic Party at this point to electability, are Biden and Booty Judge. So you'd think, like, Joe Biden's most likely to be the nominee. You'd think that would be a good running mate pick for him. And I, by the way, would agree with that. That would be, like, the only sane platform candidacy I can actually cobble together from this field or a Tulsi Gabbard, but that would piss off so many of those Kamala's a strong, empowered woman, Elizabeth Warren's great voters, that I think that would destroy his campaign entirely. Be too divisive. If he chooses anyone else, though, like if he says, well, I'll, I'll settle with Warren because she had the most hard supporters after me, or Bernie Sanders, who's even older than I am, be hilarious. I mean, watching these people debate will be funny. you got to understand there will be one debate between Mike Pence and whoever's chosen for the running mate. So it's not just going to be like incoherent Biden, maybe, or like boring fucking Elizabeth Warren getting rambled at by Donald Trump three times during the election. There will also be a VP debate, and I will definitely be paying, I'll probably be paying more attention to that, arguably, than I will be to the mainline debates. By the way, yes, at some point I have to set up StreamYards or one of these programs. I realize I've decided to just get cocked before the app generation for the purposes of delivering content here to all of you. Uh... You know, I'll use StreamYard or something. It's going to be sad, but if I want more than one person, which is just me rambling for five or six hours during the election or after the debates, I think I have no other fucking option. It's really sad because, you know, I want to have at least a half a dozen people aboard, really, for the election. It's going to be one of the, it's going to be the biggest election, I think, of our age. Um, this is the end of the prior political paradigm, and we have to see whether the Democrats shift left and what happens thereafter. Looking at the polling, I'm seeing about a third of the Democratic Party that does not want a paradigm shift. They're the Biden voters, and some of the booty judge voters as well may be on top. The majority of the Dems are ready for change. I think it's change in a direction that would lead them to disaster, but that's what they're betting on.
This is a, the Warren voter, the Kamala voter, the, the Sanders voter. These are people that want to burn the system down and, and are filled with viciousness and insanity. They're not st uh, content with the status quo. And in part, you can't blame them because remember, the status quo led them to uh, Trump 2016. The status quo let him win. Hillary Clinton was an establishment candidate. So, yeah. so look at the polls, but we've got to wait a couple weeks. We've got to see Biden's remarks on pop matter. Uh, the next few debates will matter, certainly, although people are focused so much on impeachment, they barely care about anything else at this moment. Now, except for Eric Swallow's farts. Uh, interesting times we live in. That's about all. Peace out.